Hey guys, in this video I'm going to tell you why it is absolutely necessary to have faith in order to get to success, and I'm going to tell you how you can gain that unshakable faith that you need to get there. If you ask just about any successful person who has done something noteworthy, or unsuccessful people for that matter who have tried to do something noteworthy and failed, just about every one of them will tell you that the greatest obstacles to getting to what, where they want in life is within their own mind. So if you find yourself having difficulties with lack of motivation, with procrastination, with fear, with lack of self-confidence, anything like that, then what I'm going to tell you in this video is going to make a massive difference in your life. Now, if you'll take a look at my whiteboard here, this drawing that I made, these incredible artistic skills that I'm displaying, uh, this is supposed to be a trophy on the top of a pyramid thing, by the way. Uh, what this is, basically, is this is success. And whatever that means to you, whatever it is that, you're, that you would like to accomplish in life, your success rests upon this pyramid, and that pyramid is called faith. And then there are three different sections of that faith all of which are necessary in order to get to this trophy of success at the top. And I'm going to go through what those are in reverse order here. I'm going to start at the top. The first one at the top is faith in the future. You have to have faith in the future if you're ever going to get to any degree of success, right? You have to have that belief that that success is possible. You have to have a belief that there is a future that is possible in which you have the things that you wish you had. Right? and wish you fill that gap from where you are now to the place that you want to be. You must believe that that future is a possibility. And you must believe that that future is the resultant outcome of the things that are necessary to get you to that future. If you don't believe in the future, if you don't believe that things are going to get better, and this is a problem that a lot of people have, by the way. A lot of people, uh, th this is the source of depression for a lot of people. They just cannot convince themselves that the future can be any better. Maybe their past was difficult, maybe they had a difficult childhood, and they cannot conceptualize that the future might be better than the past, right? They're stuck in the past and they cannot, they cannot visualize, they cannot conceive of a future that could be better than the past. And so as a result of that, what happens? Well, they don't have any motivation. They procrastinate, they're lazy. Why are you going to work? Why are you going to get your hopes up? Why are you going to put in effort for something that's probably not going to happen? If you're in that, that mind state where you have doubts about the future, it's very difficult to motivate yourself to do anything, especially something difficult. So you have to have that faith in the future in order to get to your success. Now, in order to have faith in the future, you need to have the second element, which is, uh, it's built on, which is faith in yourself. Right? If you believe that it's possible for certain people to get to this trophy of success, but those are only special people that have special abilities that you don't have, well, you're stuck in the same situation, right? Even though you believe in the possibility of success, you believe that it's not for you, or you doubt that you're good enough. You have to believe in yourself enough to be able to believe in your future, specifically. So if you cannot believe in yourself, then, then by extension, you cannot believe in your future, and then you cannot get to the success that you desire. So you need to have that faith in yourself. But that faith in yourself is, is also uh, dependent on an underlying, more fundamental belief, and that is the belief in God. If you cannot believe in God, then you cannot believe in yourself. You cannot believe in the creation if you do not believe in the creator. I mean, if I try to sell you a, a Toyota Camry and you believe that Japanese cars are all pieces of junk, well, I'm never going to be able to sell you that car, right? I'm never going to be able to convince you that the car, the creation, is a good product if you believe that the creator only makes pieces of junk. Even worse is if you've been led to believe that you do not have a creator at all. If you believe that your creator, as a manner of speaking, was just a, a bunch of random processes that happened to pop out you, how is that a system for believing in yourself? It's not, right? You're, you're just a random accident of nature that, that gives you zero basis for believing in yourself. And with zero basis for believing in yourself, you have zero basis for believing in the future. So that belief in God is absolutely fundamental. You must believe in God and you must believe that he made you 
in such a way as that you are capable of uh, doing the things that will get you to this future that you desire and therefore the success that's built on that faith in the future. So if you wanna have success at anything and not be just another couch potato who wastes away his entire life sitting around watching football eating potato chips, then you have to build this structure of faith in order to get to this goal. And in order to do that, you have to work from the bottom up. You can't believe that you are worthwhile. You can't believe that you are worthy of good things. You can't believe that you are destined for good things in life if you do not believe in God. If you do not believe in the creator, you cannot believe in the creation. And by the same token, you cannot believe the future if you don't believe in yourself. So like most things in life, you have to start at the bottom and work upward. And I'm gonna give you some ways you can do that. Now, probably some of you guys are saying, okay, well, that makes sense. I mean, I get that conceptually, but how do I make myself believe these things? I mean, maybe, maybe you don't believe in God. How do I make myself believe in, in some bearded man in the sky? It seems ridiculous, right? It's, it's, I might as well try to believe in the flying spaghetti monster. So I'm gonna give you a few suggestions that'll help. Number one is meditate regularly. Start a regular meditation practice because what meditation does is it kind of separates you momentarily from your sense of identity. We get so tied up with the things that we believe, the things that we've been taught, the things we've been brainwashed with, the things that were beaten into our heads when we were children who were too young to even, even critically analyze anything. We get so identified with those beliefs that the very mention of a different belief feels like an attack on our identity. And so it's very difficult to accept. So when you begin to meditate, you start to realize that you are not your beliefs. You have a essence that is separate from the things that you have come to believe over the years, from your parents or from your teachers or from your church or from wherever it came from. You are not your beliefs and you are a reasonable human being who is capable of critically analyzing your beliefs and changing them. Once you separate yourself from your beliefs, once your identity is not based in your beliefs anymore, then all of a sudden you have an incredible freedom to recognize things based on their own merits rather than whatever it is that you happen to have been taught or whatever it is that you happen to have picked up while you're growing up. Whatever it is that you happen to have clung to during your rebellious teenage phase, right? You don't have to identify yourself with that anymore. It's like giving yourself permission to have the freedom to expand your mind beyond the things that you have been restricting yourself to up until this point. And then the next thing that you can do once you have that freedom to consider other viewpoints, to consider that maybe the things that you picked up along the road weren't always completely accurate, once you've gotten to that point, the next thing to do is just look around. The creation, the, the created things that you see all around us have a lot to say about the attributes of the creator. You can look at a hummingbird that's an incredibly maneuverable flying machine far beyond anything that human beings have ever been able to invent. You can look at the, a dolphin that uses sonar for its, its uh, navigation. You can look at your own visual processing ability, which the amount of data that you take in and process every single millisecond is absolutely mind boggling if you think about it. You know, I know this firsthand because I've actually worked on visual processing algorithms uh, where a computer was attempting to process visual information in the way that a human eye does. And, the, the most powerful computer in the world doesn't come close to the way that the visual cortex of the human brain can process visual information. It's just mind blowing how powerful our brains are. And those are just a few examples off the top of my head. They're just everywhere in nature and creation. There's so many absolutely marvelous machines. And it's funny that actually we humans, just about everything that we invent is a simulation, is, is an imitation of something that God already invented in nature. Right, our flying machines are, are based on humans trying to act like birds. Right, our, the sonar that we created for our ships is based on the sonar that dolphins already have built in. The uh, algorithms that, that I've worked on building to process visual information are, are based on an algorithm actually called neural networks. Neural as in from the neurons. They're literally based on the way that the brain processes information. Everything that we do, just about everything that intelligent human beings invent, is trying to imitate the inventions that God has already given us. So once you get to that point where you can free your mind from all the brainwashing and all the bad beliefs that we've been programmed into when we were children, 
we recognize that this faith in God is just obvious. And unfortunately, we live in a society that tries to force atheism down our throat, tries to force materialism down our throat, and they do that for an agenda. Right? It's funny because these people in power, uh, they, they understand spirituality. They are in touch with, with lower spirits all the time, and yet they try to push atheism and materialism on everybody else. Well, the reason for that is that they understand this. Right? They understand that without a faith in God, we have nothing. They want to keep the power for themselves. They don't want to share. They don't want us to compete with them. So they do everything they can to make us believe in absurdities to abandon our faith and thus abandon our power. And they're very methodical about doing this, about putting their people in the institutions of influence, in the governments, in the media, in the miseducation system, in Hollywood. They control all of these institutions because they want to control our minds. And so another thing that you could do that would be really helpful is just to turn off the propaganda. Stop listening to disempowering messages from people who want to hold you down. Okay, so once you have that foundation of a belief in God, how do you get this part? How do you get the belief in yourself? Well, once you have the foundation, it becomes a lot easier. If you believe in the words of God, then you believe that you, yourself, are created in the image of God. What does that mean? That means that you have creative power just like God has creative power. You are a fellow creator with God. If you believe in the words of God, you also believe that all things work together for those who do good. That if you do good on earth, then things will be good for you. That if you are a good person, then you have the right to believe in yourself. You can have confidence in yourself because you already believe in God and that's what God says about you. If you believe in the word of God, then you believe that the meek will inherit the earth. Well. If you want to inherit the earth, then you become one of the meek. Now, what does, what does meek mean? Right? This is something that's often misunderstood. Well, meek means, and I'm getting this from Jordan Peterson, by the way, so do credit. Meek means, uh, originally, someone who has a sword but leaves it in its sheath. Which is a really cool symbolism, because what it means is somebody who has developed power, somebody who has developed strength, and yet does not use that power and strength to harm other people. So if you want to inherit the earth, there's the formula. If you want to be in the position of success, there's the formula. Have power, develop power in yourself and use it for good instead of evil. Okay, so now that you have this foundation, you have the belief in God, you have the belief in yourself, how do you believe in the future? Well, now it's pretty easy, isn't it? If you believe in the words of God and you orient yourself towards the good, in other words, you make yourself the person who is deserving of a good future, according to the words of God, then by necessity, you're going to end up here. So if you can develop a belief in God and a belief in the nature of reality, which is really inseparable from God, you can develop a belief in yourself. And if you can develop that belief in yourself, you can develop a belief in the future. And if you have all of those things, then doing the things you need to do in order to get to this point of success becomes easy. It becomes automatic. You don't have to worry about laziness. You don't have to worry about procrastination. The motivation just comes to you. It's natural. And the means for getting there will come to you as well. Now, if you're watching this and you're thinking, okay, well, that makes sense. But if this is true, then how come all the people that believe in God, how come they are not all rich and famous and powerful? And I could go into depth on that answer, and maybe I will in a later video, but I'm just going to give you sh the short answer in this video. Number one is that not, ever, not necessarily everybody's definition of success is, is wealth and fame and power. And then the second part of that is that a lot of people who believe in God, they might have this first element, but they still lack these two. And probably they lack these two because they've been misled. We live in a society that forces godlessness down our throats. So if you, it, it, they, they want you to be an atheist, basically, but even if you believe in God, well, first of all, if you believe in God, you're an idiot that believes in fairy tales, uh, and you should just shut up about it because you should be embarrassed about it. That's the culture we live in. It's a social taboo just to talk about religion at all. And then if you believe in God, well, for one thing, you're supposed to keep it to yourself. And then for another thing, uh, most people who believe in God, at least in the U.S. and Western culture, 
believe it on an intellectual level, but they don't act on it. They don't implement it into their life. They don't act in the way that they ought to act if they believe in God and they believe in wor the words of God. And so they can't believe in themselves because they don't understand the words of God or they've been, they, they've, the words of God have been perverted. And by the way, when I mentioned that the forces of evil are in control of the governments and the media, etc., well, they're also in control of a lot of religious institutions. Why wouldn't they be? The religious institutions have a lot of influence. And so they subvert them, they corrupt them, they get their own people into places of power in the religious institutions to uh, intentionally pervert their doctrine into things that are disempowering to the followers of that religion. Which again is another reason why you have to, have to, have to separate yourself from the things that you believe. Separate your identity from the things that you have been led to believe because even if you you were raised in the best church in the world with the, the most perfect intentions, even that might have been subverted. You have to be willing to question that. Anyway, so that's the short answer to that question. And then the other question that kind of goes with it is that, okay, well, why are there so many evil people that achieve success? Why are there so many evil people who get rich or who achieve positions of power? And the answer to that question is that this structure works if you replace God and put Satan. It still works. So if you believe in Satan, or you believe in Moloch, or you believe in some manifestation of evil spirituality, and that evil spirituality promises you that if you advance their agenda, then you will be rewarded with money and power, which is exactly what happened to Jesus, by the way, when he was tempted in the wilderness, when he went out to the wilderness to fast, and Satan took him up to the top of the temple and said, look out at all of the kingdoms. All of this can be yours if you follow me. Right, that same deal is available to a lot of people, and a lot of people are seduced by that, and a lot of people choose to follow Satan because of that. And because they have that support structure, they have Satan to support them, they can believe in themselves, right? They believe, okay, well, Satan said that if I do these things, then I'll get to this position. Then they can have faith in themselves. And if they have that faith in themselves, they can have faith in the future, right? They have faith in what they were promised. So this works. This is a method of getting to success and it works. It's been proven time and time again. Now, obviously I don't recommend going this route because what you'll find is that in the final accounting, the karmic debts that you accrue, so to speak, by following the path of evil uh, are, are far outweigh the benefits that you're going to get, the transitory success that you're going to get up here, the wealth and power and fame or whatever it is that you want. Uh, are just not going to make up for the things that you lose in your soul and the torment that you're going to have to go through later in life or later in a different life. But some people are seduced and some people follow this, this path anyway and a lot of those people are the people that we see on the top of the hierarchy. And they're not going to be there forever, right? Everybody knows that eventually good is going to defeat evil. The meek are going to inherit the earth from the tyrants, right? The tyrants will be deposed. They will be thrown into the pit. So everybody that follows this method with Satan at the bottom of the structure, these are people that are, that are selling their tomorrow for the pleasures of today. And that is very rarely a good strategy for anything in life. So I'm going to stop ranting now, but if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos first. Share this video if you found it insightful and you think it might benefit somebody else. Leave me a comment uh, if you agree, if you disagree, if you think this is going to be helpful in some way. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really enjoy this video. So thank you and I'll see you next time.